What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So today then I'm gonna show you how to create high converting product pages for your Shopify stores. So when it comes to e-commerce then, a lot of people think that Facebook ads is like the be all and end all. And while Facebook ads are very, very important, they only kind of like get the customer halfway there. So the job of your Facebook ads then is to entice people, get people to click on your ad and ultimately then go to your product page. And then once they're there, it's the job of your product page to turn those visitors into customers. So today I'm just going to take you through then step by step how I create those product pages for my stores. But before we get into it, as always, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation call with me on this video. All you've got to do then to enter the raffle is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on my previous video, then make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And that being said then guys, without any further ado, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the video. And let's get straight into it. What's going on then guys? So welcome to my computer. Here we are. We're gonna be importing this product then into Shopify using Obolo, purely because most people watching these videos then are using the kind of typical process of finding products on AliExpress and putting them into Shopify using Obolo. So this is the process we're going to go through. And this is the product that we're gonna be going through today. Literally everything from start to finish until the end of the process then where we have something that looks pretty decent um, along these kind of lines. So to start the video off then, obviously we have the title of the product. Now this is an old store, so there's a few things I do differently, which we're gonna be talking about in this video. And the number one thing then is the title. So you'll see a lot of people use the AliExpress title that comes with the product, which I don't recommend. I actually recommend coming up with a unique title that kind of makes you own that product. So it makes your store and your brand actually own the product so it makes that product your own basically what you want to do is name it something that so so, so that when somebody comes onto your store and copies the title of the product and goes to search for it in google they're not going to find that exact same product for sale elsewhere so let's just say for example then for this video that our store is called travel wise so we're selling kind of like traveling gadgets things along those lines we can name this something like the travel wise solar sticky charger so people who read it then know exactly, I've missed the word wise, know exactly what it is and what it does. And hopefully then if we've done our job correctly, when we go and search for it on Google, um, let's have a look at images, then hopefully the same product won't come up. Um, so just having a quick look through at some of these, then you can see that I don't think the same square one is here anywhere, which is always a good thing. And you wanna check this against Amazon and eBay as well. And that's one of the tactics you can do then to make sure because it's a popular question that people ask, like how do we compete with Amazon? How do we compete with eBay? And one little tip or tactic you can use then is to name your products something unique to your store that they won't be able to go and search for then on Amazon and find the same product. Moving on then, collection wise, obviously make sure you add it to a correct collection if you're running a general store because obviously somebody coming onto your store looking for travel gadgets wants to make sure that you show them every single product. And then type and tags then, that's purely, I use that personally for if I want to run certain offers, then I will leave that as a tag. So I think I've got a tag as an offer set up maybe. Uh, not in this store, but another reason then, the main reason then why I use it is when you can create automated collections, like basically set rules and tell Shopify anything with the tag travel, put this product in that product collection. Then you haven't got to manually add every single product. So when you've got like say 100 plus products on your store, um, then that's just, I just find that a lot quicker and easy way to do it. So we've got our title, then we've got collections, we've got the type and tags, and then description wise. So this is where the most important thing comes in. Now, where I'll usually begin then is just reading the one that comes with the product and I'll just have a look to see if there's anything worthwhile um, essentially keeping. And most of the time there isn't, so I tend to just delete the whole thing and then just start from scratch. So just to save a bit of time then on this video, because I don't want to bore you guys too much, um, I showed you earlier then we've got a already pre-created product page layout and when you're going, when you create that first product page layout, then it's fine to just copy and paste everything across per product, and then obviously just make the necessary changes. So that's what we're doing in this video then, just to save a bit of time. Otherwise, the video would probably be like a half an hour long. So paste it in. I'm not going to worry too much about the formatting until we go in and make the final changes within the Shopify dashboard itself. So the first thing I usually start with then is a hook, and a hook is essentially just to grab the customer's attention 
and try and build as much as a relationship with them as possible through pretty much just asking a question. If you can gain their attention, then no matter what distraction there may be, then you just have a better chance of them being interested in what you have to say and therefore reading through the text you have. So I usually start with a question like, um, and this question has to relate to them as well. It has to be something that essentially they answer the word yes to because the more times you can get a customer to say yes, it's been proven, there's a book on it, um, I think it's called the yes theory where if you can get somebody to say yes three times, then essentially they're always gonna buy your product or something along those lines. So we wanna basically answer a question that's gonna relate to them um, and get them saying yes to it. So have you, have you ever been um, on the go and uh, ran out of phone charge, ran out of phone charge. Now everybody, pretty much everybody has a smartphone and pretty much everybody has probably been in this case um, where you've been out and about, whether you've been traveling, um, whatever you're doing and you've been playing roulette with your phone where you've got like two, 3%, you put it into low battery mode just to try and make it survive as long as possible. So the chances are anybody who shows that initial interest in your product to come on your product page and then read this is getting them saying yes to your products essentially. So now that we've got them saying yes to our main question, this is essentially where we go on to offer the solution or tell them why this product will solve that problem for them. So it can be something like meet the Travel wise, uh, sticky, portable phone charger. Ideal for the Avid. Now this is key then, this is really important because this is again where we resonate with the person reading the text and we build that relationship. And the more times we can get somebody saying, that's me, this product is appealing to me, this product is made for me, then the better chance we have of converting them. So now we have to think about the kinds of people who would be buying this product. So I'll do it all for the Avid Traveler, Commuter, and camper. And then there are also our three main tag audiences, which we can then go on um, and create Facebook ad sets to tag them on Facebook. Would, and then we can ask, ask another question as well. So we've got them saying yes once, we can get them saying yes twice. So would this make your life easier? Question mark. So they're gonna read that and of course it's gonna make their life easier. It's gonna make everybody's life easier. So would this make your life easier? If so, check out the awesome features and benefits below. Benefits below. So again then what's that, what that's doing is getting them saying yes and it's getting commitment from them to the further read on and essentially see what see what the benefits of this products are and kind of like the the details of it what it what it is and what it does so our next job then is dead easy as long as you've picked a good product then it should be easy coming up with features and benefits that are going to be relevant to the person reading them we don't just want to put random things in there like well, for example, the material, people coming onto this don't want, will not buy this product because of the material it's made out of. They'll buy it because it's gonna fit any phone. It's gonna work any place, any time, and they can charge their phone to X percentage, which is gonna help them out. So we can get rid of the material then. Typically, I oh, like to use the stars just because visually it, lo it looks quite pleasing, but obviously depending on what theme your store is, if you're going for a really professional or really casual, this tends to work quite, not quite nicely for casual themes, then just obviously make sure it's relevant. So I'm gonna get rid of size, in fact, we'll keep size, but I'm gonna put it further down the page just purely because, again, it's not a key ingredient to why somebody would buy this product. We wanna make sure we're putting the most relevant information first. So because we've already had this question and we're introducing the features and benefits below, rather than have the different categories, what I'm gonna do is just get rid of the bullet points and I'm just gonna have a star and then straight into why this is a good product. So the main question about this product that people will probably ask is whether it will fit their phone. So what we're going to put then is USB output suitable for all phone charger cables that use USB. And then regardless of whether somebody's got an iPhone or an Android phone, whatever it is, then it tells them straight away they will be able to use this phone charger with their phone. The next thing can be um, 
how much they can charge you the phone then. So how much extra battery percentage will they be able to get? So this is why it's always handy then to have the actual product page from AliExpress open because this is where you're gonna get your features and benefits from um, and where you're gonna get the answers to your questions. So <clears throat> let's just have a scroll down. Now this doesn't help that a lot of it is in Chinese. Hopefully there's some English towards the bottom. Doesn't look like there's going to be. So let's go back to the top. So I just had to check myself then. Um, and this number, these numbers here then are basically how much power it can store and then how much it can charge your phone. So a simple Google search, as you can see, I've already searched it up here. So 5,200, um, whatever that is. <laughs> can charge an iPhone then two times in a calculation figure. So what we're gonna put then in our feature and benefit is charge your iPhone, or let's just check this out. See if we can find an answer then for an Android phone. In fact, let's just leave it as iPhone because most people tend to have iPhones and people who don't have iPhones, where they have a Samsung, whatever it is, they'll be able to translate that themselves. Basically, it can charge your phone quite a lot, which is the main point we want to put across. So charge your iPhone um, to max, charge your iPhone to max percentage up to two times. And then in terms of whether there's anything else, uh, we can highlight, definitely got to mention the fact that it can stick to a window as well because we can make that really relatable to people who travel. Well, for example, this picture here, this is great to have pictures like this, by the way, of how people actually use the product. We'll get more into that later though. Um, and that's all just Chinese rubbish. So let's come up with a couple of extras then ourselves. Uh, so four sticky pads four sticky pads to for hmm what can we pour this is the difficult bit now I don't want to make the video too boring by having you watch me come up with what to write so I may skip this bit out but four sticky pads then to stick to any window whether on a train or traveling in a car so again, there's two clear audiences and customers we're appealing to there. Uh, let's put another star in. We can also put uh, pre-charge, mm, power bank can also be pre-charged um, to save time. Power bank can also be pre-charged to save time and for to save time and immediate charging, something along the line. So I'm gonna do an immediate charging. So all that being said then, I'm just gonna round it off with the actual size of the products because most people will be interested to know um, because obviously they don't wanna order something if it's absolutely huge or if it's absolutely tiny, whatever. So it's just, um, just good practice then to put the size in. So 118 by 118 by 18 mil. 18 mil by 118 mil by 18 millimeters. So all in all then, we've got all the information that would be relevant to a customer, all the features, all the benefits. So now then, where is where? We basically wanna answer the other questions a customer is gonna be asking themselves in the head, and that is then whether we're a legit and safe company to spend their money with. And to do this then, it's dead simple, just two quick and easy trust badges, um, and then a couple of notes I usually put underneath as well, just to kind of help my own cause. So just to save some time, I'm just gonna put them at the bottom there. So you can copy and paste them, dead easy to do. And by the way, if you want, like this all set out in one sheet so you can pretty much can just copy and paste it across then check out links in the description below where you can actually download um, this free PDF um, or free ebook if you like of the product page template and then at the bottom then if you haven't noticed already um, just two little notes in about shipping just to give that customer that added peace of mind that you're legit you offer shipping insurance and you will replace and refund anything that arrives broken or whatever it is and then obviously you've got to mention what delivery is too so it is an EMS service in terms of EMS as well it is the express service and it is tracked also now you notice I've only put one to two weeks make sure you check out I'm not sure what 
what video it was. I did it recently about ePacket, and most ePacket shipped items will arrive within one to two weeks. So make sure you check that video out if you haven't watched it already. So that's essentially our product page then. Moving on to the variants. Now, moving on to the variants. So this is where it can get a bit tricky in terms of how to price your items. Um, now, what I would do actually, just to keep things a bit simple, I wouldn't import the lower power ones because there's not much price difference. It's just gonna make things pretty complicated. So I would get rid of the low power ones and just keep the most power ones. Because if you look at the difference between what we pay, then it's like one or two dollars or one or two pounds in between the cheapest and most expensive. So just keep the most powerful ones. And then rather than have this, you can, in fact, you could keep that. And then in brackets, you could have um, in fact, you only need to keep it as that. We've already mentioned in the product description that somebody can get up to two times um, a full charge. So we wanna make sure we change all the prices together. We're gonna to set a new value. And what I like to do then when I'm pricing my products is obviously this is gonna vary depending on what the product is, but for a product like this, I will try and put whatever the product's gonna cost me delivered to the customer plus 20 pound on Facebook. And then that way I know that on average, I can certainly achieve purchases less than 20 pound and therefore I should make a profit. Now, if I can't sell it at that expensive, then I'll bring the price down slowly. So for example, then our cost for the most expensive one is about 20 pound delivered. Um, in fact, it doesn't mention shipping, but I'm just not even gonna take it into account at this point because it is kind of like a mid ticket product, if you like, then I'm just not even gonna include shipping for now. So I'm gonna put this at 39.99. Therefore, give or take shipping, it gives me about 20 pound cost per purchase um, to make a profit, which I'm pretty confident in doing. And then like I said, if I can't sell it at 40 quid, then I'll probably put it back to 35 pound and see if that makes a difference to my conversion rate. If it does, then I'll keep it there and may reduce it a bit more. If it doesn't, then I'll know that it's obviously something to do with me and who I'm targeting. So compared to price then, that is if you want to offer a sale. So if you wanted to say, offer a 10 pound discount, then you could set a new value and put this at 49.99. And then what that will do is it will have the 49.99 crossed out, um, showing the 39.99 and obviously showing the customer a 10 pound saving. So moving on to images then, again, another important thing. What I would try and do here is basically just include the images that effectively show exactly what the product does and how it works. So to start with then, we obviously want the main image of the product doing its job, which is this one, which is a great image. And then we want only images then that are gonna be relevant to the customer and essentially show it being used and how it works. So this is a great image then, it shows somebody using it in a car. Now I know I've got this Chinese writing underneath, um, I'm not gonna do it in the video just again because you guys don't need to see that, but I will just get rid of that. Anything Chinese-wise, whether it's a logo or Chinese writing, um, it's gonna be a major um, put off for your customer. One thing I would actually do though, if I was actually legitimately going ahead to sell this product, I would contact the supplier because all these images are in Chinese. I would ask them if they had these same images but with an English conversion and then that way you could use them on your product page as well. So make sure you choose the ones in that show the product doing its job, showing its relevancy, showing how people would use it, who it's going to relate to. Um, this is another good one and they're going to be the main three then now for the video and then just go ahead and click import to store and once that's finished loading then we can head over to Shopify go to our products list so here we are then on the actual like within the Shopify dashboard the products listing this is where we can make kind of like the more detailed changes so first things first then let's click the view button and just have a quick look at how the actual product page looks um, and all in all, it's actually converted across pretty well and it looks quite nice. Um, a couple of things then that I wanna change. So purely because this was an English store at the time, I don't use this store, um, but you can still go in it. I'll leave it live then just purely for YouTube reasons so people can come on here um, and kind of base their stores on it. Um, so first things first, then the, the word color is spelled in the American spelling, plus there's this plug type here, which isn't important because we've told people how much power it takes. Um, if anything, it's just gonna confuse someone and get a customer asking a question that they otherwise don't need to ask. So they're the two changes we need to make on the offset. So what we wanna do then is we wanna go to edit options and we're just gonna click this delete button here and we're gonna change the spelling of the word color to, is to the English spelling. Click save, let that finish. And another thing that's annoying me as well is the fact that the Y is spelled in capitals while none of the others are. Uh, click save. 
and then we'll go back to our product page and just have a quick look at it now. So a lot better, as you can see, just the two important things um, that the customer needs to see. Uh, so we've got four colors in fact. We've got a green, we've got the black, we've got the white, and we've got the silver. So one thing I would do is go back and just get a white image just to add on there, just so the customer can see um, the product in every single color. Apart from that though, guys, um, I'm pretty happy with that to be honest. It looks pretty good. Um, I'd be more than happy to start driving traffic to this right now. Um, in fact, I would probably play around with the coloring and probably change that to black. In fact, let's see if it looks any different. Um, if we change this all to black, text color black, click save. I'm just gonna try this one thing. Um, I'm not gonna bore you for too much longer. Uh, click view. If, see if it's loaded now. So in my opinion, then that looks a lot better. It's a lot kind of bolder and easier to read. But again, it's all going to come down to the theme of your store. But anyway, that being said, I think I pretty much just about covered everything. Um, if there's any questions on any of this whatsoever, make sure you leave them down below. Um, and that being said then guys, I'm going to wrap the video up. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then please do leave a like. And if you want to be entered into the raffle, then to win that one-to-one -one call, uh, just make sure you leave a comment down below as well. And that being said then guys, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. Here we are then guys on the previous video, how many hours then does Shopify dropshipping actually take? So if you haven't watched that video, make sure you go and check it out. Um, and just kind of speed things up, I've just had a look and I think I've been recording for like 25 minutes, which is just crazy long. I'm sorry the videos are so long. Um, I will try and cut them down as much as I can. But anyway, I'm just taking the URL then, head over to the um, random comment picker, get YouTube comments. Uh, 51 unique comments, which is absolutely awesome. Um, maybe even a record actually, so thank you very much. Uh, we're almost at 4,000 subs as well, so if you haven't subscribed yet, please do make sure you do. And the winner then of today's video then is Tom Coyle. Can't wait until I'm at three and four hours a day enjoying the journey, but still. So thank you very much, Tom, for your comment. Make sure you reach out on Instagram and we can get that call arranged. And if you guys just want to get straight to booking a call so we can hop on a phone and I can help you as much as possible, then check out the links in the video description down below where you can just book one right away. And that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.